I'm not really rapping much with this line, to be honest, but it is such a good candidate. Can't even call. Actually, I'm gonna call. Yeah, I was I was thinking about the razor, but I forgot that. Well, calling is probably gonna be profitable here. I'm gonna still fire here, although I think this might get overcalled because I think his Queen X region might have to start folding a little bit here, and I wouldn't imagine a cutoff player would fold a queen here. Maybe I'm wrong, but it worked out. If it worked out, it was good, right? <laughs> Not at all results oriented. This video is sponsored by Jurogen Poker, the best multi-tabling tool for poker players. Get 31 days of free trial by subscribing with the link in the description of this video. On the right, we might have our first hand. I got pocket nines, big blind versus button. We set it to three bet, which I think is fine. You could also call. Villain takes a little bit of time and then calls. When I flop top set here, I'm gonna go for a check, high frequency. This is a board where you should go basically two thirds or check, I would imagine. And then in theory, top set is gonna go very well into the checking range. Because if you bet big here, you're blocking your opponent's calling range, okay? Once he bets, we can go for most of the check call option, although check raising is probably fine as well. But again, if you check raise, you're blocking your opponent's continuing range. So I do like to go with the check call option. Turn, you know, the queen is a card that improves his flop better range a little bit. But since I got the nine of hearts, I'm going to continue by just calling. Uh, without the nine of hearts, I would consider just check shoving the turn. And of course, against all in, easy call. He's got pocket kings and we win our first huge pot. That's nice. On the left, I got pocket aces, big blind versus button. Let's hope the button does not fold against our three bet. Please does not fold. Okay, he calls relatively quickly. We got this ace king three rainbow texture in these double broadly rainbow textures, uh, especially ace high. I like to go like really tiny bet size on the flop. I think it makes a lot of sense for my range, but you could also use a slightly bigger size and then develop some checks. I think that's totally fine. On the turn, after I bet so small on the flop, I can continue betting quite small on the turn if I want to, but I'm gonna go with a check with the top set because I block a lot of my opponent's continuing range. So I talk a little bit about that in terms of slow playing value hands out of position. One of my recent posts in my weekly newsletter, there was a post of the ultimate guide to slow playing in poker. And I talk about how having blockers to the opponent's calling range is something you should consider when deciding which hands you're going to slow play on the flop and top set is very often going to be in that category of hands. So just check all the turn here. Hopefully he's going to jam the river. No, he decides to give up this time, but we get a nice pot. If you want to get access to my strategical articles in my newsletter, go to saulocosta.poker and subscribe using your best email. But on left, I open ace jack off, the small blind versus big blind, and 10 and 6 is a very dry texture in which I can start c betting. Uh, my sizing was a mistake here. I was not supposed to bet one blind here. That's way too small. But anyways, uh, we're going to check now on this blank turn. Check call against most bet sizes unless he decides to overbet. Our hand is still pretty strong on this board here, so we cannot afford to fold. And one thing you guys are going to see me talking about in this video is that you should exploitatively over call in most situations, even at low stakes because people are going to be over bluffing left and right, especially in these formations where their ranges are pretty wide. Okay, so do not be shy. Go ahead and make the bluff catch here. For example, calling with ace high here is going to be a profitable call. Doesn't mean that I'm going to win every time, but it is going to be a profitable call. So we just go for the call here. See, he had queen three suited. We get this nice pot. So far, so good. We're winning most of the pots we're getting involved. And, you know, that's what I expect in these pools. Very low stakes pools. People are going to have a very low skill level. And we're going to be able to outplay them in most circumstances. And that could be an argument, for example, to do this on the top left here to open jack six suited. You should absolutely 100% expand your pre-flop ranges when you can expect to have edge over your opponents. Okay, don't play static due to your ranges. That's something that I talk about in one of my recent videos, top three exploits to crush poker in 2024. You should adjust your ranges according to the players you're facing. 
Well, right here, I three bat ace jack suited against the cutoff. I got this four 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 texture, which is a very interesting texture. Certainly very good for me in the sense that I'm gonna have all of the full houses with the over pairs. Turn um, queen of diamonds. That's interesting. I think I'm gonna go for the pot size here. Kind of like an exploitative bet. Just try to put pressure already to the region of pocket pairs in the range. Like deuces through sixes are actually gonna be in a tough spot now when I when I pot and over card of the turn. So I think I can I can be very aggressive in that spot as I think my range allows for it. But check calling Ace Jack, I think, would have been fine in that hand. You guys saw in the beginning of this video that this video is sponsored by Jirogen, the best multi tabling tool for professional poker players. Jirogen has three major components tiling, bet sizes, and overlays. The overlays you guys already saw here you saw the Bluff Equity, MDF, Pot Odds, Action History overlays. All of these extremely helpful features for you to have a very nice grinding experience with much more information available. You also have the tiling feature, which allows you to have all type of layout that you want. And you have an automatic layout switch feature that basically automatically changes the layout of course, the number of tables you have on your screen. Amazing stuff in my opinion. And finally, you have the bed size here. You can see that I have multiple bed size options. I'm actually gonna use one right now 1.5x pot I'm gonna bluff raise this guy with and unfortunately get caught with the nuts but these bed size options they are amazing for you to have much more flexibility because with the poker platform softwares you often don't have as many options as this if you subscribe to Jirogen using my link in the description of this video you're gonna get access to a full one month of free trial with full access into features and if you play micro stakes Jirogen is pretty much free if you play micro stakes. So take advantage of this tool by using the link in the description of this video and you're not going to regret it. Jack seven here, big blind versus small blind. We're gonna defend that, pretty straightforward. Villains bets half pot on this connected T-tone texture. This is very often going to be a recreational player. And when I say this, it doesn't have to do with the fact of whether half pot is correct theoretically or not okay guys i get that very often when i make this type of of statement in my videos and i see you guys posting comments about that you know it's not about that bad sizing being correct in theory or not it's just about that bad sizing being very often used by recreational players and not very often used at all by regulars so that basically just heavily increases the probability of the player being a recreational now on the river here, I'm going to make an exploitative play, and it's an exploitative play I recommend you to do pretty much everywhere the game tree at low stakes against regulars, against recreationals, which is to bet for thin value on the river, even in spots where maybe solver wouldn't, because the problem about reopening thin for value on the river in position is that you can sometimes get bluff raised by hands you would beat by just checking back, so that's the risk you're incurring when you decide to reopen thin for value on the river. But... People don't check raise enough in practice. They check raise much, much less than solvers, so your risk is significantly decreased, which means that the EV of reopening is much higher in practice than it is in theory. So you got to reopen those hands. I do that quite a lot exploitatively, and it works perfectly. So if you want to crush people, make sure that you include some of those thinner reopens in your betting strategy on the river because you're just not going to get punished for it. On the left here, I called ace nine suited, big blind or small blind. My opponent is short stacked and he's a bad small on this queen jack five texture. We have a pretty easy flow, of course. And now I think a pure check on the turn in theory, I would say not even in terms of exploits, you should probably start bluffing this too much. Now the river, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bluff this for an over bad size because I think that his range is going to contain a decent amount of low pairs here that I can get him to fold. So hands like deuces through eights, they're going to really, really struggle to call against the bat there. And I think it can get him to fold those hands. And since I think their range is going to be a little bit weaker than they should in theory, then I can have that extra fold equity by the river. So the thing about playing low stakes in 2024 is that there are going to be plenty of recreationals. So if you can play a solid strategy, it's very likely you can be profitable. So very recently, I appeared in Dan Jangleman Kate's podcast, winning the game of life here on YouTube. And one of the topics that we discussed was 
is the poker dream still alive? Are low stakes games beatable? And well, of course, I have a lot of insights to give into that topic because I have a staking business that stakes people through 2NL to 1K, 2K NL. So I have a lot of experience in those games through, of course, staking my students. And it is absolutely beatable, these games. So if you can just have a solid game plan, if you don't make too many mistakes, too many big mistakes, like big blunders, you're absolutely going to have a very big edge in those games. But on left here, I opened Jack-9 off and got a call by the big blind. Monotone textures, you should be careful with your C-bat strategy out of position. It is very easy to develop a very imbalanced C-batting strategy where you're just betting with your one spade hands and then checking other stuff, which can make your checking range really, really weak. So I would say be very careful with your strategy on those boards. And even if you want to simplify to like a range check, I think that's totally fine in those boards. You're not going to get punished by playing such a strategy. So a lot of checking, I think, is a good idea in these spots. Now the river with my nine, I would say theory wise, I should probably always block bet this. It seems to me like the best option. Exploitatively, you could consider check calling, thinking that maybe the big white is going to be too weak in this line and could potentially over bluff the spot. OK, so I think either block betting or check calling are both fine in the spot. And uh, you should, of course, here we have an anonymous game, but you should try to make your decisions based on the specific tendencies of your current opponent. Okay, so I think that's one of the best ways for you to increase the accuracy of your strategies. Of course, tailor it to the player you're actually facing, whether they're aggressive, whether they're passive, that's going to increase the profitability of your strategy. Don't play like standard static strategies against everyone. That's not the way to maximize EV. On the bottom left, I got sevens in the Mutue pot and the pick blind is just uh, stabbing here. Three quarter pot into two players. Really, really strong range for the big blind here. The small blind just check gems. Wow, that's so sick. So sick. Of course, I think I'm ahead here, but what are they doing? Seven, eight against jacks and I win. Nice, let's go. So far, so good. So far, so good. On the top right here, I got pocket fives against a half pot bet for the big blind. I'm going to exploitatively overflowed here. I think solver probably pure false this already, but I'm going to do this float to do this to turn my hand into a bluff by the river in a spot where their checking range is going to be quite, quite garbage in the spot. I still have some equity in the check back line for sure, but I think I can get him to fold plenty of 9x, 7x. Uh, this guy is very likely a recreational player with that half pot stab, and they're going to have all those sorts of pairs into their betting range. So by over bluffing the river, I can get them to fold all of those hands, and I'm almost never going to run to the nuts because they don't play the nuts like that, checking the river very often. So that's a pretty sweet exploit you can use in your game in low stakes and even at mid stakes and even sometimes at high stakes. On the bottom left, I opened queen seven off. That's very loose, of course, but again, it's for those reasons that I mentioned to you guys. On the turn, my hand is likely, well, <laughs> if I were to solve with some very wide ranges, I would imagine my hand is supposed to be checked very often because of the queen of clubs blocker. But I still think that it's going to be a difficult defense for a villain on the turn. So I like to be aggressive with some small bats and I do have equity anyways. And now the river going to go for the thin value bat, trying to get called by some ASEX. And it worked. It worked, which is nice. On the top right, a villain opened to a min raise, so I have to defend here with 9-5 suited. I flop middle pair. Villain snap checks the flop. That's really interesting here. What kind of hand is going to snap check the swap? I'm interested in, in figuring out what he could have here playing this way. He again checks back relatively quickly. I think that his range gets kind of heavy in the low pocket pair region. Stuff like pocket sevens or something like that. So I'm going to go for the value bet here with my nine. I think it's three quarter size is good here. We get called and win. That's nice.
and we might have a hand here. Huh. Half bet. I think I'm gonna do this. Can't we get it through? Nice, we get it through. Nice. Yeah, so just went for the check shove there with the blocker. I think it's a good hand candidate to do with blocking the straights and having a pair with the board. That gives me more full equity as I block last of my opponent's bat folding range. So I like my play there. I'm gonna show you guys in post production what villain had in that spot. And some other nice hands here. King eight, ace 10. We got three bad, but the small blind, eight and a half blinds. Kind of a weird sizing here. We're gonna call against that. It's relatively small. And ace 10, we're gonna call as well. I don't think we should ever fold this hand. Now on the king eight hand, I'm gonna start stabbing here on the flop. Um, yeah, because of that. Like I think checking means a bit face up on a board like this. So I'm gonna start putting money to the pot when he checks. And ace 10, I think it's a little bit weird to think what are the hands a regular will check back this king high rainbow texture right i mean it feels like it's a very very well protected range so i just decided to check full this time ace jack big blind versus cutoff villain opens 3x and now see bats 60 percent pot very recreational behavior here we're gonna call if I had a club, I would consider raising as well. Calling is totally fine. Turns a blank. So this is a spot where you see he continues with the exact same bet size, 58, 59% pot. This is a situation where he should polarize to over bets in the situation. That's 100% recreational player here. We're just gonna call him down. And we're gonna win very, very often. On the top right, King Jack on Ace Jack 6. My opponent checks back the flop and now is the lacy betting this turn. We have a pretty easy call. And by the river, let's see the bet sizing he uses. Our hand, I think, is in theory a pretty good call. In practice on this board, probably not a super winning call, but I'm going to make the call nonetheless here. We do run into King Queen. That's awesome. So yeah, not a super profitable call there, but I think a call you have to make in that situation, both in theory and in practice, those discontinued lines. And discontinued line is the term that I use for lines where there's a check in the middle of the hand. Those lines are the lines where people have the most bluffs. So I think you have to call there both in, pra both in theory and in practice. Ended up opening to a min raise here from the cutoff with king of five suited. I usually go two and a half x. Now my opponent's range is much wider than usual. I'm gonna back quite a lot on this 10 for three texture. I think small or half pot are both fine on this board. I think half pot tends to be even uh, more difficult to defend against because it still requires a lot of floats and a lot of raises. And I think people don't adjust all that well to that bet sizing. So I like the half pot there. On the bottom left, I got K9 suited EP versus Big Blind. Decided to check this 865 texture and now pretty easy call against half pot on the turn. Uh, recreational player snap checks the river. We're going to bomb here. You guys have already seen me do this. Take this line here in the spot. And the 8 is really great for my range. It's gonna uncap my range and I can get him to fold all sorts of pairs with the very large bet there on the river. So you can see my approach. Not only on low stakes, but this video is about low stakes. My approach is to be extremely aggressive, both with value, but also a lot with bluffs. Pretty much in spots where people have weak ranges. I talk about this a lot with my students at Metagame. You should focus on bluffing weak ranges. Don't make the mistake of trying to bluff super strong ranges, you know? I remember when I was moving up in stakes and I used to grind right once forums a lot. And there was someone who used to reply to my hand histories and he said something that stuck with me all those years. Like I probably read this something like seven years ago or something. And that that guy said something something like this, like don't try to make someone fold a strong hand by wrapping an even stronger hand. Like that doesn't work, right? So when you're bluffing people, Focus on bluffing weak ranges. Don't try to get people to fold strong hands just because you want to wrap the super ultimate nuts, you know? Like, that's not a good way to approach the game. Focus on attacking weak ranges, ranges with lots of air, lots of weak bluff catchers. You know, those kinds of ranges are the ranges that you should be attacking. 
all right that's my advice at least if you want to make more money king five off here on the button i'm gonna allow myself to open these hands because the people at these stakes they're very likely not going to be through betting enough from the blinds which greatly increases the profitability of opening pre-flop because you get to realize your equity much more right you get to see the flop and do this you get to flop a pair whereas if people would three bat me i would be forced to fold so by not getting three bats sufficiently your equitalization increases and then of course the ev of opening increases so now with my pair i'm just gonna check it down hopefully win against the weaker hands i might choose to bluff raise this it is a decent candidate although now the problem is that I'm not really wrapping much with this line, to be honest. But it is such a good candidate. Can I even call? Actually, I'm going to call. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about the raising, but I forgot that, well, calling is probably going to be profitable here. Uh, so the reason I think you should call there is because value range is quite narrow for someone betting into that three race pot, three flush cards on the board, and then fortress straight. So the value range is extremely narrow and the amount of bluffs are immense, you know? In a line where Villain identifies that both players have weak ranges because they did not put any money into the pot. So he wants to take a stab and steal the pot, right? So we can identify that and start making some lighter calls. That's what I did and it worked perfectly. A 5-4 suited here in the bottom. We have a decent candidate for check raising. I like check raising this hand. I typically don't like playing too aggressive in multi-way pots, but I think this hand basically calls for it. So I'm going to check raise the flop here and potentially put some barrels in. That's an interesting card. This card is actually a good... Well, let me think about it. I'm going to still fire here, although I think this might get overcalled because I think his Queen X region might have to start folding a little bit here. And I wouldn't imagine a cutoff player would fold a Queen here. Maybe I'm wrong. But it worked out. If it worked out, it was good, right? <laughs> Not at all results oriented. No, but yeah, I think I think betting there is fine. I mean, my advantage is in the ace queen plus region, which you shouldn't have much. So ace queen, aces and kings. Uh, and then when the deuce comes on the turn, it reduces the amount of full houses that he could have. So I think it's a relatively decent card for me to continue to wrap ace queen plus. Keeping off here, I'm getting 3 bet with the small blind, which is certainly a recreational player to 5 big blinds. So you can see here with Jurodin overlay, I'm getting 27% pot odds. I think I can make this profitable here, getting this pot odds. This is one of the amazing features of Jurodin having these overlays with pot odds and bluff equity. MDF makes decisions much easier. Now, when he jams for 4x spot, I don't think I can call this. So I've got to fold. On the left here, I uh, cold 4-bet. I cold 4-bet big blind for a small blind for 7p. This is where <laughs> Jurogen's action history feature also helps because I'm playing 4 tables here and sometimes it's hard to remember everything that happened. But this guy opened, this guy 3-bet, I 4-bet, and we take down the pot on the flop. That's awesome. And on the bottom left here, I defended queen 3 suited against button 3x RFI. We flop a flush draw. He decides to see bet small. Against a small C bet, I'm gonna go for the check raise. Uh, this hand is obviously a fine theory candidate to do so. But against his small sizes, you guys should know that you should absolutely go for exploitative check raises. Check raise more than theory. Because in these boards, you know, the guy, the IP player is not supposed to, to see bet range. And a lot of regulars and even recreational players are going to be see betting way too much on those boards. So when people see bet small on those boards, I recommend you guys go for very aggressive check raise strategy. And you can take some hands that solve our mixes between check raise and check call. And you can put it always into your check raise and strategy. That's going to give you a lot of profit because people are going to be folding way too much. And Beaver's cut off here on the slow board. I think we have to check pretty much our entire range here. Pretty decent board for the cutoff code caller. The six on the turn is also pretty decent for him. Although I think that his range at this point is not that strong after checking back the flop. So I could exploitatively expand my delay C betting range here. But I can also just check raise, right? Check raise is also a decent option here. Even check call. I think check raise is going to do the job here quite often against this very weak check back flop into turn betting range. 
he does make the call and now i have top pair which i think is gonna have some equity here i'm gonna beat some missed flush draws and some naked one pair hands infrequently but i think i will i'm just gonna check here and hope he checks back he does not check back and at this point so sick clubs i think clubs are not enough here for me to make this call but super six ball i was tempted i was tempted to make the call there jack 10 here can i start with a c bet i think a c bet is nice although you could also check here i don't think it's a board where you should bet any two cards now turn bringing a blank we should definitely have an over bet range here and i think this hand performs quite well in that range so i'm gonna put it into the 1.5x over bet range here i think that's a good hand to do that with he makes the call and river is the queen i'm definitely gonna get here with some queen so i need some bluffs jack 10 though probably not the greatest candidate i'm gonna give up this i'm gonna give up this I could see myself betting some lower cards, like some 6-5 and stuff like that. Uh, Jack-10, I feel like it blocked a little bit too much of his folding range. But anyways, Jack-8 off here on the button. I'm going to open the small blind being a recreational player, meaning that I will not get 3-bet as often as I should, which increases my equalization, which increases the VF opening. I have already said this before in the video. Flop 7-6-4. Interesting. I could see bet here, I could check. I'm gonna go for the check this time. I think checking is easier to play. Um, it, pretty much I can I can have full vision on the ranges by the turn. And I can just call here and make a straight on the river. That's how easy it is. He checks, we're gonna value bet here. As far as sizing goes, we're gonna go pot. Yeah, I think pot is nice, pot is nice. Our friend here just check jams, huh? He goes 57 on the turn. Check jams the river. So sick. I'm gonna let it pass, but I wouldn't be surprised if it just takes some ace heart X combinations and turns into a bluff. But at these takes, I'm probably not gonna be a hero <laughs> too often against all lynch all in check shoves. Probably shouldn't do that. So he takes that one. Queen City here on the bottom. Huh. Interesting spot. I think both check call and check raising have merits here. I did go with the check call this time. Check raising is certainly fine as well. I don't think you have to always check raise though you know, on this board texture. Turn he bets small. Now I think we have to raise to a sizing that reflects the polarity of our range. And now on the river, that's probably a check. Now the reason I think that could be a check is because you know, the range I'm wrapping on the turn is a lot like an 8. I don't have many queens check raising into that size on the turn, whereas he can be back calling queen X on the turn, which means that my range is essentially weaker than his in that spot. And then to make things worse, I block an 8, which is a very likely hand that I could get called by. So I think the combination of my range being weaker than his and me blocking his call range makes that hand a very interesting check and candidate by the river. So that's why I decide to go with the check. Hopefully that's a, that's, a, that's an appropriate decision. Theoretically, I'm going to put a print here for you guys. What's the proper strategy on the river with that hand? But all right, I open 10-8 off on the button. And uh, my opponent calls. We're going to go for the small bet here on the flop on this dry king high texture. We're going to check back the turn and call rivers. It's a really good line for you to exploit your opponents, particularly recreational players, but also regulars in these wide range positions. Uh, recreational players are going to have a lot of weak floats here that are going to be bluffing by the river. The pot size is not the best to see, but is still going to be over bluffed. And I'm going to make the call here. This time he had ace 10, but you got to make the call there, even against pot size bets, as you're going to make a profit, all right? I'm going to also exploitatively over call pre flop here, big blind versus small blind. 9 7 up is a hand that, with the rake of these stakes, I should probably not call very often, but given the edge I'm going to have in position here, I think this is going to be a decently profitable call for me. Opponent, C bat small, and then C bat small again on this turn. This turn is probably one in which he should polarize quite a lot his betting range. I'm going to continue calling here. On the river, he snap checks. Can I turn this into a bluff? I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check, but I wouldn't feel too bad about just trying to get him to fold an eight or 
a weak queen. Top left here against another recreational. 10-9 deuce is a board texture in which you should bet big or check, okay? You shouldn't be betting you small or anything like that. Just take your strong 10x plus and over bet and then balance that with some bluffs. That's a strategy for this type of board texture, low semi-connected two-tone. Now the turn king, we can start value betting our hand. I think anything between quarter pot and half pot on this turn is totally fine. And after getting a snap call, I don't think we can value bet this river. So yeah, we just check. It's got queen 10, we, we get it. So pretty, pretty smooth session, not many you know, super difficult spots or coolers, anything like that. So that is always nice. It's always nice. King Jack A2 tone here. Really strong board for the small blight. I'm not going to be attacking this texture too much with my weak big blind cold calling range here. Queen Jack, I think pretty good checking candidate in this spot. And we're just going to call twice if he bets turn river. If he checks, we can consider starting to value bet our hand. Although by the river, it's going to be close. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to exploitatively check with the hands that I can't get two streets from. Because when I check, he's going to be over bluffing the river with his overly weak range. So when I'm in doubt between value betting or checking with a hand like this, that probably cannot get two streets of value, I'm just going to check back the turn and then call the river. Uh, he got us there. He got us down the river, unfortunately. But I think that's a pretty good exploit. You can take almost anywhere on the game tree where if you have some doubts about whether you can be able to get the next treat or value or not, uh, and if it's a situation that you can anticipate an over bluff by the next treat, just check the current street and click the call button in the next street. Right? I think that's a very good way of doing things. On the top left, I have pocket tens and I decided to check back the flop and uh, I bet the turn two thirds, he calls and now he's leading on the river. He certainly gets hit with sixes and fours, so that sucks. And I guess his bluffs should come from the ASAX region. Ah, oh, six spot, man, six spot. Unfortunately, timed out. Really six spot, I would imagine that it could potentially be over bluffed if he overuses the ASAX region and if he, let's say he over calls like with ace queen off preflop. I think it could be over bluffed if he understands that his range is strong there and that he could bluff some ace highs there. But tricky situation. On the left here, jack seven suited on nine nine deuce rainbow. This is a board where when villain bats the size, he's going to struggle to defend versus check raise and you see he snap falls against the check raise. You should use a lot of those, uh, you know, backdoor equity, backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw kind of hands to check raise the flop because those are very dry boards, right? You don't have immediate draws right there. So you're going to have 9x check raising and then those backdoor draws. The jack seven is really nice there. And people, again, could be over folding the check raise, which incentivizes you to be really aggressive with your check raise strategy. All right. That's a very, very good idea in those situations. On the bottom left, I opened Quinton suited and got a very tiny three bat from the button player, who's surely a wreck, and then he snap checks this flop. Now, I'm gonna check the turn, give him the option to start making some mistakes, and then I'm probably gonna call him down here. I don't like the fact that he pots the turn, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to fold in the situation. Well, uh, certainly not folding now. And he gives up. 10 for suited against button 3x. Yeah, let's call that. Let's see a flop and try to outplay this rag here. The short stack. See bats half pot very quickly on 10, 7, 6. We got the top pair. We're going to float this. We make two pair of the turn. It's nice. It's nice. We now beat all the over pairs. All his 10x, 7, 6. Checks back on the 9 river. I'm going to go check call or small bet i'm gonna go check call because blocking the 10 i'm blocking the hands i want to get called by and recreational players are going to have very wide range that they can't over bluff with so yeah i think i prefer the check call there on the river instead of betting myself if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss my next videos and for more content into how to crush low stakes check out this video right here i see you there